Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today I'm going to show you how NetPlay works on RetroArch, and this will allow you to play locally with two players on two different devices, as well as over the internet. Now there's a few rules that you have to follow in order for this to work. One, you have to use a RetroArch capable device. Two, they should probably be running the same version of RetroArch, because three, they need to be running the exact same RetroArch core. And not only the same core, but also the same version of the same core. So it makes a lot of sense to make sure that you keep your RetroArch up to date. That way, if you're both playing with the most up-to-date version of RetroArch, you should be able to get that. And finally, you have to also be playing the exact same game. Now, I don't mean that you both need to be playing Contra. I mean that you both need to be playing the same version of Contra. So theoretically, as long as you have the exact same version of RetroArch on two different devices, you can play them across two separate devices. So for example, you see I'm using the RG351M as well as the PAL Kitty RGB20. Because they both run ArcOS, which means that I can update the cores using the same operating system and everything's good. Now it doesn't need to be that complicated. For example, if you have two RG351Ps and they're both using 351 Elect, for example, they'll both be able to use Netplay. And I've personally tested both ArcOS and 351 Elec over the past couple days, and they both work just fine. So without any further delay, let's knock it out. Okay, so like I mentioned before, they should be running the same operating system between the two different devices. So just to double check, I'm updating both of my versions of ArcOS using its online updater tool. That way I know they're both at the same level. Then once it's updated, I'm booting into Contra here, and again I want to make sure I'm loading the exact same core and that I have all of my cores updated to the most recent version. All you have to do at that point is just pick one of the devices to be the host, so you go over to the host section, you select host, and then start netplay host just to start it up. But if you want, you can also use a relay server, and that's going to use one of the RetroArch servers to relay the signal back and forth. And if you're having issues connecting just directly through the Start Netplay server, the relay server will help you out. It's a little bit slower, but that's one easy way to connect. But we're just going to keep it simple, and we're going to do the Start Netplay host here. So once I've started the host session, it'll say I've joined as player 1, and additionally it should map your port. From there, you go to the other device and you select Refresh Netplay Host List. And this will show you everybody who's connected in RetroArch. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll probably see the other device connected over the internet. So if I was on a different Wi-Fi network, that's the one I would connect to. But because we're on the same Wi-Fi network, I can actually connect to this device locally. So instead, I like to go to the bottom of the list and it'll show all the local hosts. From there, all you have to do is hit A and it'll connect. So here we are, the RG351M is player 1 and the RGB20 is player 2. So I'm just going to put in the Konami code here and then start right up. Now both devices are going to show the exact same thing on the screen. It's kind of like playing on the same TV at the same time, just over the internet. So for example with Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo, it splits the screen into player, so it'll split the screen when you're playing it on this one as well. Okay, let's try it with a completely different game here. We're going to try Contra 3 instead of Contra 1. Now this is a Super Nintendo game, so I'm running on a different core here, and I'm actually going to use the RGB20 as the host this time. So you can see here I'm refreshing the netlist, and then the local host doesn't show up yet, so I need to refresh it again to make sure I see that local host. And sometimes you have to do it two or three times. So going back in there, and there's the local host. Now sometimes you'll find that you don't have a very good connection. So for example, you can see here, when I'm using the host, it works just fine, but when I'm using player two, it's not showing up on player one's screen. So for example, I just hit that bomb and it's not showing up on the other screen at all. So there's some sort of glitch going on here, obviously. And sometimes it'll catch it and it'll reset the game for you. It's really kind of weird. So I don't think there's any fix to this or anything. I just think it's one of the quirks of RetroArch's netplay system. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but heck, it's a lot better than not having anything. To me, the idea of being able to play across the world is totally cool, which I've done with my friend Mashtech in Germany. We were testing this out about a month ago, and it was working okay. We had to use a relay server, but it worked. So let's do a few more tests here. Here's Streets of Rage 2 on the Sega Genesis, and I'm using the RG351M as the host again, and again, I'm not having any issues with the player 2. So maybe it has to do with RGB20 being the host versus the RG351M. Maybe it has a better connection. I'm not really sure. 
So I'm gonna use Sonic 2 as another test here, and this time I'm gonna make the RGB 20 the host again. And you can see here, player one's doing fine, it's showing up on both screens, but the moment I use player two, it doesn't show up on the RGB 20. So maybe if you have these two devices, make sure that the host is the RG351 and not the RGB 20. And maybe it has something to do with the Wi-Fi chip on the RGB 20, I'm not really sure. Netplay works really well in MAME and Final Burn Alpha, so you can play arcade games together. And some of these are my favorite games ever to play. You know, Simpsons Arcade, X-Men, Mortal Kombat. Being able to play those over the internet is just like a dream come true. The 12-year-old version of me is thinking this is the coolest thing in the world. And not only that, MAME allows you to do more than two players, so here I am with three players. Now remember, the RG351P that I have has an internal Wi-Fi chip, that's why you're not seeing any dongle here. And all three of these devices are running the most recent version of ArcOS, as well as most updated cores in the exact same game. But you can see here, three-player gameplay is a possibility. That's really kind of exciting to me. Now in general, the people behind RetroArch say that it works for any system that can use save states. But what I've learned is that any PlayStation 1 and above games will not use Netplay, so you can't use this for Dreamcast or anything else like that. And even here, when I'm trying to connect PS1 games, it's trying to connect, but every single time I would get disconnected. And additionally, you cannot use this to link up different Game Boy or Game Boy Advance systems before you ask, so you're not able to trade Pokemon. This is literally just for two-player gameplay. So I had a couple other systems I wanted to just verify that they wouldn't work. So you see here I'm using the RG351M and then trying to connect my PS Vita to it. And the PS Vita would not find the local host at all even if I refresh the net playlist. And when I tried to connect over the internet, it wouldn't work at all. Now here, the Retroid Pocket 2 would find the local host. But when I tried to connect the two devices, it said they were not using the same core, so I wasn't able to connect. All right, everyone, that's it for this video. I just really wanted to get the basics out there so that way you can test this for yourself. If you find any other tips and tricks, please let me know in the comments below. At the end of the day, there's not a lot of information out there about Netplay. The way that RetroArch kind of writes about it, they just assume it's gonna work every time, but there are a lot of little tricks to it all, and hopefully I captured all of those for you. As always, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you found this helpful for you, and we will see you next time. Happy gaming.